Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Austin. Uh, while Carl pulls his presentation up, which should be on the desktop, uh, our next presenter is Carl Anderson. He comes to us uh, initially by way of Mona, about 80 miles south of here, where he is from, uh, and then today from Geisinger. interesting fact is that he absolutely loves to hike, so he's back in a good place to do that. Um, he's done a lot of great work with Dr. Bernstein, um, so that's something else to know. And today he's going to be presenting uh, proliferative retinopathy and hemoglobin T trait. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. And uh, grab, grab the mic. Thank you. Glad to be here, and uh, I'll just jump right in. Um, so, my goals today are to review some of the etiologic differential diagnosis for uh, vitreous hemorrhage and to explore a case of proliferative retinopathy that was found in a patient with hemoglobin AC or hemoglobin uh, C trait. Uh, this man was a 46 year old African American male of Haitian descent and he presented with constant blurry vision um, for the past few days in the right eye um, associated with floaters and he commented that he couldn't drive safely, couldn't read fine print without any other symptoms. Um, other eye problems included uh, ir irritocyclitis in the same eye um, for which he was being treated with Predforte, sorry, um, and no other medical history or medications. Uh, he'd had no surgeries um, and did have a, f a family history of metabolic syndrome type things, including heart problems, and he had formerly smoked cigarettes. So on exam, his uh, blood pressure was elevated. Um, he was count fingers in the right. Um, good vision in the left, and his pressures were normal. External exam was normal. Um, his anterior segment exam was also normal, except for a rare cell in the right eye, um, which had the um, the visual symptoms. And in his posterior segment, there, the fundus was unable to be visualized well because of dense vitreous heme. And in the left eye, he was noted to have old sheath vessels, lattice degeneration, and tiny dot hemorrhage superiorly. Um, so quickly to review some of the differential diagnosis of the causes of vitreous hemorrhage, um, one of the probably most common ones that we see in the clinic is posterior vitreal detachment. Um, also retinal detachment can cause it. Uh, retinal tear, that makes sense if the retina tears and the blood vessels coursing through the retina uh, will also sometimes tear leading to vitreous hemorrhage. Wet AMD can also be a cause and anything that um, leads to ischemia induced neovascularization the new blood vessels are weak and of low quality, the most com common of which in the U.S. is PDR. Um, sickle cell retinopathy can also cause a neovascularization. This is called a C-fan pattern. Um, and trauma can also um, lead to vitreous hemorrhage, whether that's open globe or a closed globe blunt injury. Um, retinal, artery the retinal artery macroaneurysm, um, typically in patients who are hypertensive, these can become weaker and progress and then um, bleed into the vitreous. Um, a re really interesting one that I found here was Tursen syndrome. Um, if somebody has a subarachnoid hemorrhage, there's a possibility that the blood will track down through the optic nerve sheath and go straight into the eye and uh, produce a vitreous hemorrhage that's visually significant. Um, there you can see it on the CT scan, the little bit of blood there. So in this patient, narrowing down his differential, he didn't have diabetes, he didn't have any <coughs> severe headaches, he had no trauma. That rules out several of the causes. Um, the B-scan was done in his right eye uh, because there was not a good view and the OCT of the left eye. And he was referred to uh, his PC, a PCP for blood pressure control. Here's his B-scan showing dense, uh, vitreous heme without any detachment. Um, and his OCT was unremarkable in the left eye. Uh, fluorescein angiography was done on a follow-up visit and it showed a persistent vitreous hemorrhage a couple weeks later. Uh, you can see that the view is poor because of the blood that's still in the eye. But you can see that his vision is improving quickly. Um, in the left eye, there's a little bit of motion artifact, but in the central macula, um, his FA was pretty, pretty good. Um, out in the periphery, he had neovascularization 
um, and some poor perfusion uh, consistent with pro proliferative retinopathy. Um, microaneurysms, as you can see there, and a little bit of leakage. Um, in the left eye, his fundus photos showed these sheaths that include quote unquote silver wire retinal vessels, which were observed on initial presentation. And he was further worked up. Um, his vision was improving, as I mentioned. PRP was done um, to help prevent um, a bleed in the left eye. Um, and he decided not to have vitrectomy, um, most likely because his vision was improving well and quickly without surgery. Uh, hemoglobin studies were done uh, with HPLC and then confirmed by gel electrophoresis and this showed interestingly that um, his hemoglobin A was down quite a bit, usually that should be up in the mid to high 90s. His hemoglobin C was way up, should be pretty much zero, um, and it was up at 35 percent. So this is consistent with a carrier of hemoglobin C allele. Um, his quantifiering gold, TV gold, came back positive, and when he was questioned about this, he said that he was treated for tuberculosis as a child, and he turned out to be HLA B27 positive. He was referred to hematology to further discuss um, his hematologic abnormalities. Um, as the heme cleared out of that right eye, PRP was also done in the right eye, and his vision, he had a good visual prognosis over the next couple months. Um, when the vitreous hemorrhage cleared sufficiently, a uh, horseshoe tear was found and laser retinal pexy was used to fix that, and he was started on blood pressure medication. <clears throat> Eight months later, he presented with uh, a new hemorrhage in the, in the left eye. So he was count fingers at one foot. And uh, posterior pull exam showed this, this heme, and the detachment was ruled out by a B scan. So to kind of discuss this disease entity, um, hemoglobin AC is pretty uncommon, 2.4% uh, in the U.S. African American population. It's almost always asymptomatic, um, and a lot of those alleles come from West Africa. Hemoglobin SS, also known as sickle cell disease, has serious systemic manifestations, um, and hemoglobin SC can have serious ocular manifestations, but like I said, um, hemoglobin C trait is almost always asymptomatic, and hemoglobin C disease, if, if it presents, is very mild. So it's very unusual that we saw proliferative retinopathy in this patient. Um, <coughs> there's been a couple reports of, of this case in the past. Dr. Morton Goldberg, that name might be familiar to some of you, in 1971, uh, proposed a classification system for hemoglobin SC proliferative retinopathy. And we applied this to our patient, so he would have been stage four in the right with the vitreous hemorrhage, and stage three in the left with the proliferation of blood vessels. Um, here's some of the characteristics of hemoglobin SC, and you'll recognize a lot of these from the patient that I presented. Capillary and arterial closure, capillary network tortuosity, microaneurysms, AV and astomoses, neovascularization, frequent progression to retinal and vitreous hemorrhage. Um, and here you can see the AV and astomoses, there's the microaneurysms, it looks a lot like hemoglobin SC disease, but he didn't have a hemoglobin S allele. So to conclude, this is a very rare case of hemoglobin AC. Um, there have been some studies showing rheological abnormalities in people with hemoglobin C trait. Um, so that could have been contributing. Um, very few individuals ever developed this, this ocular symptom, these ocular symptoms. So maybe there's an, a multifactorial etiology that accounts for both local and systemic effects. So this person had a lot of risk factors. So hemoglobin AC, uh, aberrant blood vessels and hemoglobin, or blood cells and hemoglobin, a history of smoking and tuberculosis, HLA-B27 positive <coughs> iridocyclitis. Um, maybe the combination of those was additive, bringing about vascular closure and proliferative changes. And, uh, as, as I mentioned, this is usually asymptomatic, so maybe it was many different factors. There are some limitations, however. Um, as was noted, he, he did have retinal tear, so maybe that was solely responsible for his vitreous hemorrhage in the abs, like totally set apart from his proliferative retinopathy. Um, that could have been the explanation, and maybe it was just a coincidence. So I'd like to thank you all very much.